Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch, and welcome to another completely random look at. Uh, today we're looking at Polybrush. Now, just yesterday we looked at Delay, a 3D sculptor, and this is another program I found about the same time, and it's a very, very cool application with kind of a unique purpose, but at the same time, I will admit up front, I'm horrible at using it. Uh, the interface is a little obtuse, and I fight with it. So I'm gonna do a very, very, very bad job demonstrating it, but I, what I do wanna do is show it to you because this might be a missing tool in your toolbox. And essentially you can think of it as a rapid 3D sketching program, but that is selling it a little bit short. At the same time, as I said, it's a little inaccessible. The user interface is a little unintuitive. Um, so there's a learning curve here and it's not a learning curve that I've gone through. So I am not a great user of this program. So do not look at this video as any kind of a, here's how you use Polybrush type tutorial. It isn't. This is, here's Polybrush, go ahead and take it if this looks cool to you and go learn more. And speaking of learning more, um, Polybrush is available at polybrush.org. It is completely free, you just download it. And most impressively, it's only a four meg download and two megs of that is brushes. So this is a two meg program. In this day and age, that's pretty awesome. Um, on the other hand though, Linux users, Mac users, sorry. It's not for you. There's only a Windows version right now, and I don't know what the plans are coming in the future. Now, if you actually wanna see what Polybrush is capable of, I highly recommend you come and watch this particular video right here. And notice how I'm muted? I'd recommend that too. Uh, but it's, let's get this um, version up a bit more, but you can do rapid concept. See, look what he's doing. He's doing symmetric drawing and sketching really quickly. And that is what this program is all about. And it's quite cool in how it goes about doing it. You can create your own brushes that you paint and draw with. Um, so let's jump in and fuddle our way around the actual program really quickly. So if you wanna see it in action, again, come back and watch this trailer so you can get some idea of what the program can do. Now, here it is. This is Polybrush by default. Um, the controls are fairly straightforward. You use Alt and the middle mouse button to um, pan, Alt right mouse button to zoom and Alt left mouse button to orbit. And you see this guy right here? Well, that's the drawing plane and you can control it. That is where you, by default you will draw when you use a brush. So see, I've got the normal brush right here. Let's make it a little bit smaller. All right. And I just come in here, I'll set a color. So red, and then I just draw like so. Okay, now when I use Alt and left mouse button and orbit around, you see it drew it on that particular plane. So we can now use these keys up here to change the plane, like so. And now if I go ahead and draw, regardless to where my view is, it draws on that plane. So you see, there or there. At the same time, I can hold down, I think it's control, yeah, control and left mouse button, and that will orbit or right mouse button or middle mouse button. So basically you're picking where in 3D to draw with this draw plane and you're drawing like normal on said plane. It's a very cool, quick, rapid setup. At the same time, you've got this layering system down here. I could create uh, multiple and many layers like so, but I could also create a layer like this guy, tag it as 2D and now draw on it. And it just draws flat 2D um, graphics on top. We can uh, hide layers, show them, etc. So if you're doing quick concept art type stuff, uh, this is a great program for that. Now, the next thing we can do, let me just clear everything out first, um, is we'll go look through some of these brushes. These brushes are um, predefined. These are the two megs worth of space. So you see, come in, tools or brushes can be used for drawing on other surfaces. We'll get back to those in a second. We can also do things like create chains of, of shapes. So literally, here's a chain of chains. And let me just get that viewport back. Oh, neat thing you can also do with the viewport is you can set the viewport here to camera mode and it will automatically just snap it to whichever way you're looking. So as you're using um, Alt and the left mouse button to move the, the world around, the plane goes parallel to your, uh, or perpendicular, parallel, parallel to your camera. So you can also set it up to work that way if you want by hitting this cam button. But see, I've got chain selected. So now I can actually just draw shapes like so rapidly and quickly. So it's a very quick, responsive, cool tool. Uh, you can use these um, compound brushes like so. And then as you saw back in that video, you can also heavily get into symmetry. So you could have 
you know, eight or nine um, symmetric shapes all drawing off at the same time. You can also get into lathing up here. Now, I never got through the interface on how to go about doing this, but if you watch the video, you can see where it's being used and how it can be used to make um, symmetric sculpted shapes very naturally, very cool. Uh, lathing used to actually be a very common way of making shapes back uh, in the patch modeling days. So you've got your brushes down here. You can also define your own brushes uh, easy enough in the program. And then the other thing that I didn't really show Come on back, we'll create a new scene. We'll turn this off of cam mode. Actually, if I do a new scene without that, eh. okay. So let's set our view plane. All right, so we're back to a standard stock view plane. And I'm gonna come over here to objects. And you see you've got your basic primitives built in. So we can go here and create a sphere, like so. So now that it's created, we can size it, etc. But I'm just gonna go ahead, it's done. So if we wanted to have more segments, we can go ahead and create them here. We can change the radius here, etc. And then when you're done, click apply to create it. So we've just added a sphere to our, our game world or our, our uh, 3D world here. So now I can go back to brushes and I could pick one of, say, I'll go back to these tools here. Uh, I think I want tools one. And we'll go over the move brush. And this is better shown in wireframe. So I'll switch over to viewport and you can see uh, wireframe turned on like so. So now we have a move brush defined. I'm going to check, jack the radius up a little bit. And we'll go back into edit mode. And you want to go to modify around. And now you can essentially use these brushes. Zoom in a bit. I can now use this move brush on this shape. And you can essentially sculpt. Like so. Or I could I could also have symmetry on on X, Y, or Z axis, etc. Um, but as you can see, you can use brushes on complex shapes like we just did. And pull you out. Now you'll notice it's only working along the, um, the construction axis. So if I want to work out this way, I need to, oh yeah, just control quickly and bring the construction. So the construction plane is critical in determining uh, where and how. So instead of, you know, in a traditional 3D modeling program, you use uh, your X, Y, and Z uh, widgets to control which axis you want to work around. In this one, it's this construction plane here in the background. But as you can see, there is a lot of power packed away in this guy. And it's once you get down the workflow, you could do some things very, very quickly. And then you can come in here, define your own brushes or edit these brushes out, uh, change multiple values for them and work from there. So here forms, um, here, go ahead and clone that brush as the starting point, uh, etc. I'm not gonna get into it. This is where the user interface starts to lose me and I need to spend a bit more time trying to figure out how this works. Now, another really neat thing we can do is instead of just work plane that we've been working on. So we've been working on the work plane all along. I can switch this instead to objects. And now we have this weird ass object that we've sort of been creating. And let me just bring it over. So another thing I can now do is I can come back to one of these brushes such as, all right, so I got a little bit of a leftover all right, there it goes. All right, hair. So pick hair, pick a type of hair from the brushes down here. And here, let's go, let's go with the blonde look for today. And now I can actually draw it directly on our surface. And as you see, it's following the path of the mouse like so. So you can actually have your, your drawing be on objects as opposed to on the work plane in the background. So I have made absolutely gibberish here. I, as I said earlier, I am no expert at this program. The interface is one of those things that um, you are gonna struggle a bit. Like it's not immediately obvious that to, to sculpt a shape, you need to pick a brush, select the brush, switch to edit mode, go on down to modify around and then change things. At the same time, symmetry is like an on off switch in the background, etc. So it'll take you some time to get the interface down, but the workflow is actually Got a heck of a lot of potential. And then what the heck would you do with any of this stuff? Well, at the end of the day, you've got your save as or export. We can do save as copy, and you will notice it can export as an OBJ file. Uh, so this is just like delay yesterday. The end result is ultimately going to be a static mesh in object or waveform format. And as we saw just the other day, uh, the end results go into um, just about any application ever seen. Um, so let me just go. A poly brush demo. Uh, save that to my desktop. So, all right, it's done. So file 
and import and obj and desktop. And there's what we just created. So you notice a bit of difference. The axis is um, the uh, the axis is definitely different as well, but you can easily take your mesh out. You're sitting at 25,000 vertices as your end result here. So if I hadn't gotten into this crap, we wouldn't have done a whole lot more um, of polygon count, but your end results can be a pretty dense mesh pretty easily. But you can use this as a rapid sketching tool to create just whatever shapes you want. And then if you had to, you could come in and retopple them in whatever program you wanted. So it can definitely slot into your workflow however you wish. Now, again, oh yeah, there's also remeshing, which is kind of cool. Uh, so I should actually be able to bring down the polygon count like so. Now, as you'll notice, oh, we just lost a, a whole lot of the, uh, the outer detail, but there is remeshing built in. There's a whole bunch of stuff built in that I haven't even tapped on. So once again, I want to reiterate, I'm not trying to show you how to use this program. I'm just trying to show you that this program exists and a bit of a head start on what it does. And then you can dive in from here because I am still just playing with this guy myself. Um, but it has a very unique workflow, that, that work planes approach, the sketching approach, the uh, creating compound brush approach, it's all very cool. And there's a lot here that I've only really kind of touched the surface of. So this is one of those things I highly recommend um, that you check this out if this looks interesting to you in any way. So as long as you're on Windows, there's absolutely no barrier of entry. It's available for your platform and there is no cost involved. Um, so once again, that is Polybrush. Uh, Polybrush is available at polybrush.org. And if you want to see what it can actually do, again, I highly recommend you come and check out this trailer. And once again, I would turn down the volume just a bit, a lot, off, maybe mute it. So anyways, uh, that was Polybrush. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, see you all later.